This is Jack the Ripper. It can rip 4K Blu-rays, DVDs, and CDs onto your PC. I've spent thousands of dollars building my physical media collection, so packing it up to my media server just makes sense. It gives me instant access to everything through Plex anytime I want. In this video, I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of setting up your own Jack the Ripper. It's a powerful, yet budget-friendly way to rip 4K discs using some surprisingly cheap software I find online. Hey everyone, welcome to Dreamin' Digital. If you're someone who cries at night missing the old days of the shopping at Fry's Electronics, trust me, you're not alone and I'd like to welcome you home. If you get something out of this video, do me a favor, slap around that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's build something awesome together. The goal today is to keep it simple. I'm gonna walk you through exactly what you need to build your own personal Netflix at home. No unnecessary steps, no confusion. Let's be honest with each other for a second. The quality when you sail the high seas is just all over the place and sometimes good versions just don't don't exist. By ripping your own discs, you're guaranteeing the best quality possible because you already own the best quality possible. If you've put in the work to build a badass media server like I did, of course you want the best looking content to go inside of it. And if you're just getting started, I've got your back guys. There's a link to my media server build down below. Just a heads up, ripping 4K content eats up a ton of storage, so plan accordingly, guys. I usually recommend ripping Blu-ray since it's much more manageable in size, but either way, having plenty of storage is the best advice I could possibly give you today. I went with an internal drive, the LG WH16NS40 paired with the Vantech Nexstar enclosure to turn it into a mobile ripping solution. But here's the caveat. Not just any drive and enclosure will work. You need a specific combo that's compatible with the firmware available on Make MKV, which allows the drive to read and rip your disk's content. Also make sure your drive was manufactured after 2016, or this more than likely won't work. I'll list all the drives recommended along with everything else you need down in the description. The reason we have to flash custom firmware is to bypass the built-in security on the disks. But even with that, keep in mind, no drive can read every 4K disk, just won't happen. The big win here though is these internal Blu-ray drives save you a little scratch. These Blu-ray drives are way cheaper than the actual 4K UHD drives, making this a good value proposition. Plus I think it's pretty cool that you can just hack a standard Blu-ray drive to rip 4K content. That's naughty. Before we dive in, just a little heads up. You're doing this at your own risk. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I did it, but if you use a different setup, or follow different steps, I can't guarantee the same results. Now, quick story time. I hit a bit of a roadblock during the flashing process and figured I'd check the Make MKV forums for help. That was a mistake. I asked one question and boom, my account was banned, no explanation, no warning. Tried reaching out to the admins, nothing. I even contacted one of the main guys behind the firmware, but instead of helping, he just tried to sell me some custom firmware or a pre-flash drive. Look, I get it, he's not obligated to help me for free, but he's he flat out said there's no money in one-on-one -on -one support. Fair enough. Total bitch. The plan was for me to figure this out myself so I can teach you how to do it too. That's when I found Marty McNutz's email, one of the OGs in this space. He got back to me so fast and helped me sort everything out. Huge shout out to Marty. Turns out I was just trying to flash the wrong firmware. My bad. Now that I've got it all figured out, here's how to flash your drive. All the links to everything we talk about are available in the description below. Make sure you've downloaded the latest version of Java onto your PC. Download the SDF tool flasher. It's the software that will allow you to flash the firmware onto your drive. Next, you'll download the all you need firmware pack where you'll have access to different firmware for different drives. Extract everything and put it somewhere safe. I just threw everything on my desktop for easy access. Download the Make MKV software. This is the program that actually rips the content. You get a free 30 day period to do as much as you can. Then it's a $60 license for forever ripping. 
Not free how it used to be, but you can't put food on the table with free, I suppose. I think it's worth it and the alternatives are way more expensive anyway. Once you've downloaded everything, open the Make MKV software and the SDF tool flasher. On the Make MKV panel, you will need to make sure where it says Drive Platform, it needs to read MT1959. This is the most crucial thing. Do not flash your drive unless it says MT1959. You will brick your drive otherwise. Under Status, it should say Possible. On the SDF Tool Flasher GUI, you'll select the drive you're working on and then select the firmware. For this specific drive, you'll be flashing the WH16NS60 1.02 MK firmware. This is where I messed things up on mine. So make sure it's this specific firmware for this drive. After the flashing is successful, you'll go back to the Make MKV screen and make sure it no longer says possible under status, but it should now say enabled. Once you've done that, I would power cycle your drive and then take it for a spin. Ah, you see what I did there? You'll be able to select what folder you want your content to rip to. I chose a folder on my media server. It's already linked to my Plex server. Makes life easier and it has 14 terabytes to play with. And that's all she wrote. You should be able to rip the majority of your media collection without any issue. Overall, the process hasn't changed much. It's just more expensive now than when I first did it five years ago on my Audio Architects channel, but with firmware and hardware constantly evolving, it's always good to refresh these videos. For me, it's about ownership. When I buy physical media, I want to own it, not be limited by discs or licensing restrictions. This setup gives you full control over your collection. And yeah, I get it, streaming is convenient, so why not create your own media hub with all the movies and shows you already own, without the hassle of having to swap disks every time. Once everything's on your server, you can stream it from any device that supports Plex or Jellyfin. It just makes life easier. Good luck with your setup. I'm sure you'll be just fine if you follow these steps. If you got some good value out of this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Let's grow this community together. Make sure to play games with the like button. Games, love games. That's right, love games, Greg. And don't forget to ring the bell so you'll know the moment I drop a new video. Thanks for hanging out with me today, friends. I will catch you on the next one. Take care.